Yeah, so. I think it is the morning gal and sure. having the photos on his back. I just said to somebody yesterday, he used to go and they came in, I don't know why. Good evening and welcome to worship this evening. Just um, one announcement tomorrow morning we are having Christmas Day service at St. James in Wanksville at 9 o'clock. New Year's Day will also be at 9 o'clock at St. James. Many ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth and then formed man and woman in his own image. Long after the great flood, when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant. 21 centuries from the time the promise was given to Abraham and Sarah. 13 centuries after Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt and Miriam danced in freedom. 1100 years from the time of Ruth and the judges. 1000 years from the anointing of David as king in fulfillment of the times and years and months and days discerned by the prophets. In the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus. While the whole world enjoyed a span of peace, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit and nine months of growth in the womb of his mother. Now in our own times is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh. Thank you. 
Please stand as you're able for the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Word made flesh, our life and our salvation. Amen. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, let us confess our sin. God of life, you promise good news of great joy for all people and call us to be messengers of your peace. We confess that we too often hoard our joy, our resources, and our security. We nurture conflict and build barriers. We neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation. Have mercy on us. Where we are self-centered, open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Where we are cynical, restore our trust. Renew us with your grace and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. Amen. Hear the good news. We are children of God and heirs of God's promises through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus, we are forgiven and redeemed. Sing with joy for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God. Amen. Amen.
His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. Reveal the Lord of those who do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord, proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and great be to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but you, O Lord, have made the heavens. And the majesty and magnificence are be your presence. Our our Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to your holy name. Bring all praise and the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the hill be joyful and let all that is therein. And then shall all the trees of the woods shout for joy and ever coming. For the Lord will come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with the truth. The second reading is from Titus, the second chapter. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people with them who are zealous of the deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> Tonight we gather to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We hear the familiar story in which, amidst the decrees of the Roman Empire, the heavenly host break forth in song, glory to God in the highest heaven. Amid dogma, we hear doxology. Amidst power, we, we sing praise. In the opening verses of Luke's Christmas story, we hear that a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. The Roman Empire dominated the Mediterranean world at the time of Christ's birth. In fact, the Roman Empire was the entire world, and the emperor was the supreme ruler. So when the emperor made a decree, one obeyed. To ignore it would put one's life at risk. To maintain the working order of the empire, people must be counted so that taxes could be assessed. To show how great and powerful the emperor was, publicizing the number of people in his kingdom would garner respect and awe, as well as a source of income. The Roman Empire operated under idolatry, exploitation, oppression, violence, and brute power. Yet God works through understated means. While the census takers went door to door, the shepherds watched their flocks unnoticed by those in power. Suddenly an army of angels appear announcing the birth to you is born in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah. In an ironic twist of fate, the savior of the world appears to a group of people who don't even make the census, who literally don't exist in the eyes of the Roman Empire. And the message is announced by an angel troop armed with song, not artillery. Jesus is a different sort of king. Jesus is the Messiah who will bring the ultimate salvation, the forgiveness of sins for all people and deliverance from eternal death. Jesus' birth is not heralded with great fanfare. Instead, Jesus is born in Bethlehem, in an ordinary community. Jesus is not born in a palace, but placed in a manger. In her poem, The Risk of Birth, Christmas 1973, Madeline LeAngle writes, that was no time for a child to be born in a land in the crushing grip of Rome. Honor and truth were trampled by scorn, yet here did the Savior make his home. The shepherds who were the first to hear the good news are the ones on the fringe of society, ones who are overlooked, ones on the margin, ones who don't count. And yet it is here that the Messiah's birth is announced. It is here that a new world order starts, replacing the Roman Empire with the realm of God. Our world is enamored with pomp and circumstance. We worship those with money, power, and privilege and yet our world is broken. We live in a world of decrees, emperors, poverty, and injustice. We might even identify with the shepherds, people who feel they are overlooked and don't even deserve a tally on the census sheet. We too are 
alone on a hillside at night, wondering if God knows we exist. And yet, the angel of the Lord says, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. I am bringing you good news. To you is born this day the Messiah. This announcement doesn't go to the emperor or the people in power. Instead, this announcement is for the shepherds and for us. God does not overlook us. The good news is for us. The Christmas story is a story of a king who was born among the humble under humble circumstances. A king who comes as one of us, vulnerable, poor, an infant dependent upon others. In his birth, Mary's Magnificat is fulfilled. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. In Luther's Christmas Eve sermon of 1525, he said, Nobody notices or understands what God performs in the stable. He permits big houses and the expensive rooms to remain empty. He permits them to eat and drink and to be of good cheer, but this treasure is hidden from them. Oh, what a dark night must have been over Bethlehem at that time that they did not see such a light. The good news of the nativity of our Lord is good news not just for the few, the elite, or the privileged. The good news is for us, for those who are marginalized, oppressed, or otherwise absent from places where good news is typically proclaimed. In the midst of the dogma of our world, the angel's doxology, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, Peace among those whom he favors is for us. To you is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The shepherd's response in telling others what they had seen and heard becomes our response as well. To you is born this day a Savior. And with the angels, we sing our doxology. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease. God of grace. You cherish those who are most vulnerable. Protect infants and children and bless those who care for them. Watch over women giving birth, attend the dying, and relieve any who are in pain, especially those on our prayer list and those we name silently in our hearts. Shelter refugee families and those who have no home. God of grace. Your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help any for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us or known to us who are experiencing distress of body or mind, missing loved ones or grieving, especially the families of Barbara Garrison, Arlene Keller, and Frida Lena. God of grace. We welcome those who have died into the joyous light of glory. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have praised you with the lives of faith and humility. Inspire us by their example to love you by serving others. God of grace. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Thank you. 
us pray. God of abundance, receive the blessings gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace. Poured out through Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. Oh Lord, be here with you. Glory to 
God in the highest. Come to the table of peace. Just a word for this evening, we welcome all to the table. If you would like to encounter Jesus Christ in the bread and the cup, you'll come forward by the center aisle, take a glass, I'll give you the wafer, you'll receive wine, and return to your seats by the side aisle. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, with us forth as messengers of your peace. May us shine with the good news of your glory. Lord, Lord to us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the joy of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, the worship of the wise men, and the peace of the Christ child be yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we will um, receive Silent Night. You'll need your little handheld candle. Just a reminder to keep your lit candle upright. Only dip the unlit one.
Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim this good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
trying to keep myself away. <laughs> I just didn't want to church to church. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw that chat out there. So, <laughs> yeah, so I got a little chilly. I'm waiting on that cabin. Yeah. I haven't built it yet. <laughs> oh, I was off the camera. 